Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You To Sleep Number I'm not sure I think it's, it might be number 94 or 95, I don't know, I should do a special 100th episode, how, how could I make a 100 special, because if I was 100 years old, well not me necessarily, but normally people that are a hundred get a well in my country you get a, a a letter or a card or something from the queen to say happy birthday so instead of waiting 52 years which is how long I have to wait for that and the best will in the world if I reach a hundred um, unless there's I mean there may need to be some major medical breakthroughs for me to reach a hundred but for the Queen to still be around when I'm a hundred you know, I wish she was but unfortunately she's I think she's about 95 now when in the 90s so it will be who would it be do you reckon the queen the, the king even king charles it won't be king charles because he's he's about the same age as my dad so he's about 73 74 something like that um suppose it would be one of the one of his children so King William or King Billy I suppose yeah but even then he'll be yeah because he's only what was he 10 years younger than me So that means he'll, he'll be 90. So it's possible. Yeah, if, especially with his family. Because they do live a long time, just like my family do. Ah, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll be the king. Wee. So, I don't know if I said welcome to jasonnewland.com. That's the website. That's the place to be. That's the new groovy place. Don't worry about Disney World, Disneyland. Uh, Bolton. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other places that are really popular. Um, Hollywood. Syria, I don't, you know, just places that people like to go. Don't worry about those places. This is a place, my website. This is the popular place. It's a place to come to listen to me talking about stuff. None of it is political, none of it's relevant. <laughs> Some of it's relevant, you know, to specific uh, sessions, you know, for, uh, you know, whether it's nail biting. See, my friend Brooke, in, um, she lives in Americana, and, uh, She's. She, I suppose I shouldn't really say 
too much, but uh, if she listened to one of my recordings, anyway, that's that's all I say. And she really, it really helped her. And she told me the other day, and it really helped her to um, overcome something that she'd had been dealing with for a long, 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 long time. Uh, it's nothing embarrassing or personal, but it's still. You know, I haven't got her permission to tell you, so I won't tell you what it was for. Um, and is what I've done is on. Do do do. Where is it? Yeah, on my YouTube, on my f- um, website page, the very first page you get to, you know, the front page, the home page, whatever you want to call it, uh, the there's a list. It's like a basically, it's a, an MP3 player, and there's the list of all my latest sessions but what I did ah here this is listen to this what I did was I went through my archive of previous recordings over the years that were the things that stood out to me you know they were long they were Perhaps not like brilliant quality sound because I've not always been able to do that, but you know the quality of the content was good, and it was these recordings were. Although I didn't have a script and I didn't necessarily prepare in a big way before recording. I did know what I was going to talk about. For example, uh, let's say nail biting, um, stopping from cutting. Because uh, it's been a, there's a, I've been affected by sometimes by posts that people put on Facebook. There was a post by a young a young woman. She was one of my Facebook friends and. She said something about how she hated the way she looked. So that evening, I made a recording uh, called, I think it was, uh, Love the Way You Look, or Love Your Body, or something like that. I had another person that contacted me about self-harm and I made a recording specifically for them well that was for everyone to listen to but it was called No More Cutting and it lasted for about 40, 50 minutes something like that it was another one for vomiting so I made ones for somebody so there's a few there's probably about 30 maybe 40 recordings that I've made over the years specifically for people because of either they've asked for them or I've seen uh, a post on Facebook and I've, I've uh, I suppose I've reacted to it I've emotionally been affected by it uh, enough to want to help So I've made a few recordings like that over the years and they I think they seem to get lost a little bit because I've got so many recordings. Oh yeah, I should say only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes as this boring session may cause boringness to develop into a way which may cause 
uh, yawny yawns and sleepy sleeps, uh, which would also involve uh, closey closey of the eye eyes. So please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, please, again, only watch when you can safely close your eyes. And please, 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 not prescribe. No, you should never prescribe unless you're actually a doctor. Subscribe, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'd like to thank you, those of you watching on YouTube, thank you for watching because I appreciate it, gen- genuinely. Thank you. And also thank you to everyone that's watching on Spotify, on Spreaker, on uh, iTunes, on the iTunes iPad, iPod, iPhone, <sighs> Stitcher, blah, blah, blah. you know, the various different places. Thank you very much. I love each and every one of you. You are wonderful. It is brilliant to have you in my life. It's really good and I do appreciate it because without you watching and listening, I would literally just be sitting here on my own talking to myself which is technically what I'm doing but at the moment I know that you're going to be listening but if no one listened I would just be sitting I wouldn't need anything to record my voice would I I might I'd just be sitting here on my own talking to myself and mm, that's uh, it seems like a bit of a slippery slope potentially and I I only really like to do things if there's a reason for it even something as uh, seemingly pointless as this you know talking for an hour about nothing but the more I do it and the more feedback I get and most of my feedback is from private messages. I did mention that, I think, yesterday. And the more I realise that it's more than just me talking and you falling asleep, there's more to it. And people listen for different reasons. And some people listen because it distracts their mind Uh, and when you're listening to me you're not thinking about anything else you're because that's maybe that's a good thing maybe it's because you get used to my voice uh i become part of your life kind of like a, a a regular thing if that makes sense uh i suppose a little bit like a a radio show or a television show but with but you know at least you know that I'm not getting paid anything so that you can feel good about that so it's uh, you know I'm not getting any of the rewards of doing this like a radio host would be they earn a lot of money people on telly earn a lot of money imagine I don't know if I'd want to be on telly because I think seeing me would just be a distraction it just, you know, I'm just too sexy. I'm I'm too handsome, I think. A bit too handsome for television. I think I'm probably better on a audio, you know, level. That's why I don't really like doing Facebook. You know, doing the live broadcasts. I prefer to be... For it just to be audio. Although I do like to show Andre off. You know, it's my fa- one of my favourite things in the world is to to have Andre and to show him. So, uh, what I might do, what I might do, and what I'm thinking of doing, is perhaps, 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 
doing because I've been thinking about doing a like a weekly show like a live show I'm still thinking about it nothing's sort of nothing's uh, glued together you know it's really still thinking about it because my friend Boston Chicky said what time was I going to be doing it and uh, it was going to be sort of like late evening but that's still too late or too early for America or where she lived in like Boston so I don't want to alienate my friends in America because the majority of my listeners are in America so I don't you know 80% of everyone that listens to me on my podcasts and it's always been the same since I started this in 2006 it's always been majority has been American and then England then well sometimes England not even second but quite often England is second uh, wherever we got then it's maybe Ireland Australia New Zealand South Africa and uh, where else and then you know parts of Europe Germany France uh, and then you know it's, it's all different countries so many different countries of the world people are listening you know Ghana uh, Syria uh, just you know different places because the internet reaches everywhere doesn't it and especially with phones you've got I imagine the if you're using an, a, a smartphone you notice they're called smartphones there's no no dumb phones is there there's no so, so why call it a smartphone it's, there has to be it's just a phone I mean nearly all phones now are seem to have the capability and of doing what they all kind of do I know it's you got the Android and then you've got the iPhone and that seems to be the the two types and with the Android then of course you've got lots of different uh, makes uh, Nokia and Sony and the BBC and the GBH and uh, Hoover and Ford or you know the different makers of phones and uh, it's you know and you can buy them in all quite kinds of places uh, that sell phones because that's always the great place to go to isn't it if you're going to buy something go to the place where they sell them although online I wonder are we really going to lose all the shops in the world I don't know you know so where are you going honey I'm just going to the internet to get some milk you can't go to the internet there is nowhere to go I, I want to go and get a paper but the internet's closed it's like I, I, how are you there's got to have to be a shop maybe in the future there'll be one big shop for every town and it'll do everything and I don't mean like a supermarket although I kind of do but what I mean is like a, a little shop that you go in and it'll be if you ever read the I think it was either the Beano or the Dandy although it might have been the Wizard of Chips but I think it was it was a Beano or the Dandy because when I was a kid I used to get the Beano and I also used to get Look In magazine my oldest brother used to get 
This is weekly. These are the comics. My oldest brother, who's four years older than me, he used to get, if I remember correctly, uh, a football magazine because he liked football. And I'm sure he used to get like a, a war magazine because back then there was a lots of like comics about war and uh, you know like action and stuff so I'm sure you used to get one of them as well my other brother who's also older he's two years older but he's younger than my oldest brother so he's he's his so he's my oldest brother's younger brother but not youngest brother because I'm his youngest brother but he's my older brother and the other one is my oldest so the middle one he used to get I'm pretty sure he used to get the Wizard and Chips and the Beano so what we used to do what me and my middle brother used to do we used to swap over we used to read our own and then we'd read each other's But I don't think I ever read... No, I did. I did. But I tried to. I tried to read the football magazine that he had. And I couldn't. It was just... I just couldn't. It didn't... um... It's... I don't know. It's something about... Because he was interested in football, but like really interested in all the different teams. He was a fan of the local team, but he was really interested in football, you know, generally. Uh, So it's something about, to me that would be trying to learn different species of ants and or different kinds of leaves or just collecting butterflies it's kind of just or stamp collecting something like that to learn all the different intricacies of the individual teams you know different colours they wear when they're playing at a home compared to the different colours they wear when they're playing away from home But then, again, I'm not even sure what the answer to this is, because sometimes they had the same colours as another team. So their home colours could be the same colours, or their away colours could be the same as the other person's home colours. So what happens then? Do they change them? And And then... And this is actually a genuine question. I'm not still not sure. Don't the they change half time, don't they? They change side. They change not change sides. You know, they don't become a different team, but they change. They go to the other side of the stadium. So you know, to a different goal. So they stay. They go to a different goal. Um, and I didn't realise that. When I was at school, uh, I, I scored uh, a triplet. I scored three goals in the second half, not realising that we'd, we'd change sides or change halves. And so I was sort of scoring the wrong goal. I was like, why not? Why didn't anyone tell me that I was standing on the wrong side? But the thing is, when you're at school with people, you're used to being, you know, so, well, I'm used to seeing them in maths. And English, you know, I always, I think I was, I don't know if I was ever not picked last in sports. So I do know what that feels like. It doesn't, not the most wonderful feeling in the world. You know, I never never felt really excited about that process. I think it's quite a horrible process. 
I had it when I was doing Taekwondo. So I never had it again since I was a kid until I was doing Taekwondo in about 2011, I think I started that. And again, we were picking sides, you know, and you'd have this activity where you'd, uh, I don't know, fight each other or whatever it was. And it's like, and again, I'd be picked last. It's like, oh, that's nice. Pick on the middle-aged man, why don't you? It's not, yeah, I didn't like that. Of course, I didn't, didn't used to say that when I was a kid, you know, or pick on a middle-aged man, because that wouldn't have really fitted. In fact, I'm probably older than my teacher was when I was at school. Not all the teachers, because some of them really were old. Some of them really were, were old. It's, you could see they were deteriorating in front of your eyes. Some of them just stopped being there for so long. Just, they just, sometimes it was hard to tell the difference between them and the, the desk they were sitting at. And you could see behind them, like the outline of their body against the wall. There was, like they'd been sitting in that same direction, that same position all those years that the sun had been shining in and it wasn't able to reach the wall because they were sitting there and the outline of them was against the wall, like their little shadow was permanently there. I say little shadow because all my teachers were very short, apart from the one that was really tall. So I had these magazines in in um, the Beano or the Wizard and Chips. There was a shop. And it had, definitely wasn't in the dandy, I'm sure. I think it was called the shop of, uh, the best shop in the world, or the largest shop in the world, or the shop, super shop, or something like that. And every week, someone would come in, and it would be like a, like an old fashioned hardware store or like an old shop you know you go in there'd be a little bit of space in the front and there'd be a big counter all the way around and the person serving would probably have a an overall on you know maybe brown or like a coat not a coat as in going outside uh, it's raining outside it's alright I've got my coat on not that kind of coat but uh I suppose professional for that profession uh, I guess and every week someone would come into the shop and ask for the most random item in the hope of catching them out that was the premise of the whole story the whole show the whole thing was that every week someone would try and catch them out and ask for something that they don't have. And every week they would find it and they would have it. And as I tell you this, it sounds like one of the most boring stories ever. They must have made it interesting somehow. But anyway, maybe that's what this is going to be. We're going to have that as a a place to collect the internet stuff as well. So maybe, you know, with all this uh maybe things will change on the internet and it won't no longer things won't be delivered. You know, you'll have the option just to maybe just collect it. 
and there'll be all these underground tunnels and helicopters will be landing and just dropping stuff off and there'll be this massive uh, building but just an entrance that you go into but the building is like the biggest building in the world and you can go in there and get a pint of milk or a litre of milk or two litres or four pints I sometimes get four pints of milk but the thing is I don't drink that much uh, I mean I do drink more than four pints in a year but I don't drink that much in a it depends how long I've got I'd like to if I'm going to have some milk I like to drink it within three days so what I normally do is a small milk isn't really enough you know like I think it's a pint is it a pint it doesn't seem like a pint those little cartons those little plastic uh, carton things So I ideally like maybe a litre. I think that can't, maybe a couple of pints. It usually uh, does me. So people, sometimes people listen to this, listen to these, listen to me, la 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 la. And it's not just for being bored into going to sleep. Now, that brings me with the situational thinking of wondering, well, what should I do a different recording? Uh, separate from this as well as this or should I just continue to do this which is well to say it's obviously it's a question isn't it it's just that is definitely a question it's definitely a question um, I don't know I mean in a way even though I've got what 90 however many I've done it's still in a way I only just started there's thousands of these to come over many years possibly every day for the next 20 years possibly you know possibly but I have been I have been doing those uh, what are they called deep sleep whisper hypnosis recordings and I've been I've been really good actually with that I've been doing them pretty much every day and I've now included it into my routine into my daily routine is includes recording those sessions my daily routine hasn't yet included this I'd like it to, but it hasn't. So I'm going to kind of look in how I can, and I think the only way of doing that is to repetitively do it, you know, at a certain time. Whether it's after I've had something to eat, where, you know, something like that. Um,.
The thing is, if I do it when I'm too tired, I struggle. I struggle to talk. If I'm, you know, I know that it's aimed at, um, you know, creating boredom and tiredness. But if I'm too tired myself, I'll be sitting in. I won't. I won't want to talk. So I need to. I think. I think I said that yesterday or sometime, is. I can only do this when I'm awake. Even if people are listening to them when they are going to sleep. Do you see what I mean? I need to be awake when I do them. Uh, especially as they're not the same as the the sleepy stuff where I'm just uh, it's like and now uh, yeah, you can feel your toes falling asleep one by one and and your toenails stop arguing with each other and they make peace until the morning and the little toe waves a little white flag uh, with a little message saying sorry sorry for breaking your Meccano set and the next toe says, what's, what's a Meccano set? And then uh, pulls another message saying, oh, it's a, it's a toy that kids used to use in the 80s, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, but people don't really use it anymore. It's kind of used to be used in the same, uh, like parallel to Lego, really. Oh... And the toenail next to it says, "Oh, why well, don't you just say Lego set then? Wouldn't that make you know make it a bit more easier for the listeners to uh, comprehend what you were talking about?" And the little toenail. He said, "Yeah, I, I would have done. Had I thought about it, given it a little bit more thought to start with, I would have just said Lego set." But the problem, you know, what the problem with that is, and the other. The other toenail said, no, what? Little toenail said, well, you wouldn't know what I was talking about because it was your Meccano set, wasn't it? That I broke, not your Lego set. And the other toenail said, yeah, that's a good point. That's the problem, isn't it? It's, uh, it's one thing, you know, wanting to try to make what we do uh, accessible for everyone to relate to and understand and comprehend. But at the same time, we need to, you know, have a bit of truthfulness. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So, are you going to fix the Meccano set? Are you going to give me some money for it? Or what's the deal there? Well, I thought if I just apologised, that would be enough. I didn't expect the conversation to go on any further than that. I thought just holding up a little white flag, saying sorry for breaking your Meccano set, and then I could just roll over and go to sleep and think of Paddington Bear. What? Well, thinking of Paddington Bear makes me feel comfortable and happy inside. Also, I like marmalade. Okay, all right, well, perhaps we can talk about this another time. Okay, night, 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 night. Don't forget to do a wee wee before you go to bed. Yeah, thank you. So when I'm doing the sleep sessions, sometimes I get a little bit sleepy. And I, uh, uh, there's been times when I've actually fell asleep, like proper, proper fell asleep, like really. And I just snored. And it was kind of, it's a little bit scary actually when I listen back to it. Because I wasn't recording it live. I wasn't like broadcasting it. So I just recorded it 
fell asleep and then woke myself up. And I listened back to it and it was absolutely fine. And then when I started talking when I was falling asleep, what I was saying wasn't making sense. It was all over the place. It was a bit incoherent. Um, so I edited it, edited it. I left the incoherence in because I didn't think anyone would notice. But I took out the snoring because it could be a little bit disruptive. You know? Yes, yeah, so for me that would be like if you was in a, a restaurant. Valentine's night maybe you know having a nice romantic meal with the love of your life and you got all your meal and it's on the table and you're both sort of eating it and then the waiter or waitress comes along and pours a big big bowl of salt all over your dinner and hops away that yeah, that would be disruptive. That's what I mean. Be a disruptive element to the event. So when it comes to thoughts, when it comes to thinking, when it comes to thoughts, Maybe listening to me, there is a connection between, you know, having that like calming down feeling and hearing my voice, which is like a bit soothing, you know, relaxing, because, you know, I'm not... uh, I'm not the most energetic person, you know, speaky wise. I have my moments physically, sometimes I can have a little bit of energy, but just generally, uh, you know, if I stub my toe or something like, or or I can definitely hop around and uh, have a bit of uh, energy explosion. But verbally, when I'm making recordings, the energy level is uh, probably, I don't know what you would, what would you give it out of 10? You know, 10 being like really high energy, high, so for me, a 10 if you were thinking of maybe a like a radio broadcaster someone that was talking really quickly and I would say loudly but you know you're in control of the volume aren't you but you're not in although you can be in control of the speed if you're listening on playback you can download it and play it back at a slower speed I suppose but can't imagine ever, anyone's ever wanted to do that with me. So out of ten, ten being like a real quick, quick speaking, blah, 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 blah. and one being slow motion, I suppose. I wonder what number you'd give me. What number you'd energy wise? What number you'd give the JJ what what would you what would you give me what number out of 10 energy wise there are no wrong answers or right answers and you will not win a prize I'm just wondering it's not always easy for me to be able to judge well, I can't, but I don't want to judge myself anyway, but I can't. 
I can't relate to myself the way that you relate to me and the way that you relate to me may be very different from the way other people relate to me but I can't understand what it's like to look through your eyes or to hear through your ears or to feel through your fingers or your your body to experience what you experience physically or emotionally because that's uh, personal for you it's we're all different but saying that out of 10 what do you reckon energy wise and I do wonder is it people that listen to me is it people that are also quite like not slow because it's not about being slow but talk slowly or do I have people that talk quickly? And does listening to me help you to slow down and to slow your talking? Because that can be a useful thing. Sometimes if if the thoughts are going around your mind quickly, and if you do, if you are in a position to talk, maybe by talking slower than you normally would and maybe not as obviously slower so you know not in slow motion because then if you take too long to say a word you may forget what the next word is going to be in the same way though if you're start in the first word and you already know what the 14th word is going to be before you've even verbalized the first word then maybe you need to take a step back and take a pause unless you're in the middle of a live play where you know the 14th word because it's a script that you've learnt and it's part of the acting that you're doing but if it's a conversation and it's a new conversation and it's something that you've not rehearsed then why would you know what the 14th word is going to be unless you've already rehearsed it and if you have rehearsed what you were going to say why? why have you rehearsed it? I'm trying to think of a situation where I would rehearse and there's lots of situations I would rehearse but I don't know how many of those are useful maybe a job interview you know, maybe rehearse in my mind how calm and relaxed I'm going to feel when I'm sitting there in front of the two people that are interviewing me and just knowing within myself that actually I deserve that job and I can just be myself knowing that I can feel confident because you know, I'm a legitimate, genuine applicant of that job. And I deserve that job as much as anybody else does. And I could have that confidence. So I could perhaps rehearse that in my mind. But I don't know about rehearsing other stuff. I don't know if that's really worthwhile. Because I do have, it might not seem like it, um, by the way I talk. I'm a woman's man. <laughs> what is that song? You can tell by the way I walk, I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. That's uh, the Bee Gees. Clearly the most masculine man. <laughs> manly men that ever were 
It's the. Uh, I think that's what I liked about the Bee Gees. It's one of the things. It's just. I used to listen to them, and it was the same time that I wanted my voice to break. But then there is this group of young, well, men that are a lot older than me, and didn't sound like their voices had broken and they were doing quite well for themselves so I thought maybe I'll be a singer maybe maybe I'll join the Bee Gees and I can add my squeaky voice to their squeaky voices and contribute somewhat. Someone told me that I said about writing a book. I talked about maybe writing a book. Because it's dawned on me. This is this has dawned on me. That because I've made so many recordings. I'm not really going to be able to sell recordings. I could, but it, it, the the thing is, it's you can listen to me for free. Hundreds of hours worth of stuff, and so maybe as a from a merchandise perspective making a CD or MP3 download unless it was a, like a special edition or something like that doesn't seem like it's going to be uh, very viable very uh, popular even because I'll have that for sale but I'm still making one or two or three recordings every day for free. And then I thought, I thought about the different merchandise and things I could do because I do need to start earning a living. And it's either go back to work and work in a call center somewhere become self-employed and maybe work as a counsellor again a therapist you know hypnotist hypnotherapist seeing one person at a time and still not really earning particularly much money Or focusing on what I'm doing now and trying to turn what I do now into a living. So it's still a free service. Still make free audios and free videos. That doesn't change. But I earn a living out of it. Which is kind of the only thing I've wanted to do for a long time. It has to stay free. And whenever I talk to people, I've talk, spoken to a few people, and and they have got my my interest at heart. You know, they do care about me, and they care about... Um, that's pretty care about also being right as well, but that's just a human thing, isn't it? And, and they say, oh you got to make it, you can't give away stuff for free and also ask for money and charge. you got to stop giving away stuff for free. But I can't stop. I can't. I can't stop giving it, for free. I can't stop doing free stuff. That's not going to happen. I'd rather stop altogether than stop doing the free stuff. That's not, I can't, can't happen it's not going to happen so 
you know what I did? I actually got not brainwashed, but uh, someone that I know was talking to me and going on and on about it for years. And every time we spoke, she'd say, "Oh, you got too many sessions. They're free." Uh, if you're going to sell stuff, you need to get rid of all your stuff for free, but make it all for sale. Get rid of the podcast. You can't sell and can't sell stuff and have stuff for free at the same time, even if it is different things. So I don't know why, but on one this one occasion, and it was a few months ago, wasn't even that long ago, probably. September I did what she said I followed her advice I got rid of my podcasts cancelled them at that point I was getting about 20,000 downloads a month was it 20 yeah it was about 20,000 a month downloads and I got rid of got rid of all the free stuff and I made everything available to download for like 99 pence or one pound 99 each thinking that I'd give it a go you know maybe because this person is a successful business person and I thought okay it must have been a moment of weakness on my side when I was maybe had yet another bill come through and not having really enough to pay and it's like oh that's it I need to earn some money so what I did is I did that I put everything available on my website to pay you know to buy and I thought that people would just start flocking to my website and downloading my stuff uh, because at the beginning of every session I always say my website address well anyway that didn't happen I did get more and more people come and visit the website but it didn't you know they didn't pay I cut I think I had one person pay and then I I ended up giving them the money back um, because I put everything free. So after a few days, I converted everything back to just being free, but I didn't start the podcast again. I just left everything on the website free to download. And I was getting more traffic and getting quite a few things downloaded. But nothing compared to the 20,000 downloads I was getting a month from my podcasts that I'd had online for you know, quite a while. So in the end, what I've decided after a few weeks is I'll start a podcast again. And sort of I felt like I was starting from the beginning, which was a, a little bit annoying. And I yeah, I started them, then I deleted them again. Then I started them again. You know, so I kind of was playing around with it, not really sure what I was going to do. But I've stuck with it and with my the, the main speaker podcast in December I had 10,000 downloads so I managed to to get up again you know to get the the amount it's only half what it was but still I was pleased to, to start to uh, reach in an audience again and getting back getting back on iTunes and 
Spotify and you know all the different places and then I was last month I don't know how many I had probably it was over 20 25,000 last month if not more downloads in January and I'm now hitting well over a thousand every day now I think today already it's been about 1,500 downloads and it's about 1,600 yesterday and uh, it's just growing and it seems most of those not most of them but a lot of them are on iTunes but there's also you know quite a few on Spotify and the various different places so the way I see it is now it's going to grow it will just continue to grow from now on and I'm pleased about that because I, I want it to and also I've got all the backdated stuff I've got all the other stuff some of it's quite good some of it's just awful but it's, <laughs> it's just really bad no it's not some of it is really good you know maybe um, the sound quality isn't perfect on everything but you know what I noticed? Some of these podcast hosts like Spotify and stuff like that, they actually make the stuff sound better when you listen to it. When it's streamed, it's actually, I don't know, its I guess it's their, their technology makes the recording sound better than it did before I uploaded it or to me anyway so what I'm going to do before I go I was going to give you some homework but I won't because that's like the worst thing in the world isn't it no don't give me homework because I would never this, as soon as I hear the word I, my brain just shuts down but here's a suggestion. What's today's suggestion? Let me have a think. I'm going to do a daily suggestion, I think. So today's suggestion and this can be for tomorrow, if you want. Something you can do for tomorrow. So it's a daily suggestion, you can do it whenever. Get a piece of paper. Or, oh, what you could do actually, get some lipstick or a marker pen. Or if you haven't got anything like that, you get a piece of paper. And just put it above your mirror in the, in the bathroom or wherever your mirror is. And just write, I deserve to be happy. I deserve, I deserve to be happy. So you could do it, put it on a piece of paper, sellotape it above the mirror or on the mirror. Use blue tack. I think you can get white tack now, can't you, I think? Or you can, if you've got some lipstick or 
a marker, not a permanent marker, but just a, something that you could write the words, I deserve to be happy. And leave it on there for the week or for as long as you want. Just for the week, though. leave it at least for a week. And every time you look into the mirror, say those words to yourself out loud. Unless, of course, you've got a lot of people with you and you're in the middle of a dinner party or something, I don't know. Maybe you're meeting for a book club prayer meeting or maybe it's some kind of intervention but you know whatever you just say it out loud I deserve to be happy say it a few times let those words sink in Let the truth of those words sink in. Let the reality of those words and the emotions that are connected to those words sink in. And also notice any reactions that you may experience to those words. and say the words anyway. Now, that is me for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me in this little daily adventure that we can share. And I will speak to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.